Welcome back to second round coverage of the Preserve Championship hosted by Airborne Disc Golf. We've got round two front nine coverage at the fourth of 10 stops on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. We are here in Clearwater, Minnesota for this exciting championship. We got Big Barry commentary. I'm gonna go ahead and call it. New name, Big Barry. Today, Jeremy Colling joined by Paul Yulberry. I absolutely love that name. <laughs> that was a suggestion on the audience. You guys got better names, bring them out to us. What do we got for these players here? Oh, well, we got James Conrad, 15 under par first round, absolutely smoking the field. He well, was. he didn't because Nico is right there with him at 15 under. Simon, 13 under. And the final player on this league group, Calvin. God, <laughs> my goodness. Calvin. <laughs> Sorry. Dude, we got a job to do, Calvin. You can't be looking at away from the camera like that. All right. On the hole one, par four, 667 feet. This is just a hole to get the player's feet wet. It's just a big bomb off the tee. Kind of sets the pace for the rest of the round. Big tee shot lands somewhere around this range right here, unless you're any of these guys, which you're going to be up another 100 feet further down the fairway. And then it's just a pitch across that little OB ditch there. A couple of low ceiling trees to contend with on the approach, but for the most part, it's a pretty easy starting par four yeah absolutely especially with this group i believe yesterday all of them had putter in and i expect a lot of the same today and we kind of skipped over nico in that intro with that incredibly hot start he was one of the earlier rounds and from the beginning of the day most everybody on the course knew what was out there with his 15 under coming in at around like noon and still players hadn't even teed off until 1 30. Nico going big turnover, forcing that a bit wide, but all the distance he needs, that's easily close to 500 up the fairway. That'll be just a pitch across with a little love at the end. Pretty nice. James Conrad, such a great round. He was just driving the disc so well, gave himself so many opportunities. Connected on a couple jump putts, even missed two inside the circle and still shot 15 down. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty incredible to miss putts and shoot 15 under. Talked to Kevin Jones today. He said, I thought you weren't playing well, and then you came in with a 15 down. That's how quiet his round was. James, the nice low ceiling Anheuser drive. That's well up the fairway. Two gentlemen are two back from them at negative 13. Uh, first up from Bremen, Deutschland, Simon Lazat. Definitely excited to see Simon attack this course today. Not that we didn't see plenty of bombs yesterday, but clearly the showman. He'll be out here throwing big shots all round. And that's what we're talking about right there. Just that higher line, a little bit more trust to give it that extra bit of distance. That could come in play on some of these bigger holes. Absolutely. Curious, do you think any of them could get over the hole? <laughs> I think, I, yeah. I think, yeah. There's, I think there's probably four players in this field, this being one of them. Maybe Simon, Eagle, Drew. And there's some, there's some players up here in Minnesota that I'm not that familiar with that are throwing absolute bombs. Ezra Adderhold deucing hole four yesterday with an air shot. That is just some incredible power. Calvin pushing this one left. This needs to get down quick, and that's in the ideal position. He's pushed that far side left of the fairway. He just goes over. <laughs> yeah, saying. exactly. Oh, there you go. I mean, that's just out of jump putt range. Just as expected, all putters are going to be thrown into the screen. Starting with a nice little AVR here from James. And that's a Conrad AVR. Leaving them a little bit short. That tree is just about 27 feet away. I wouldn't be too surprised. Yeah, Nico might go with a putter, but he also likes throwing those uh, overstable mid ranges with a little bit of flex. But Looks like he's leaning toward that sinus. Yeah, I think it is pronounced sinus. That's low, but enough forward momentum, the good skip. That's a short putt left for Nico. Excited to see him, the way that he plays after 
coming in with a 15 down. I mean, that kind of pressure to sleep on, you know, when, when you start this event, you know that it's going to be a sprint all the way through. You must have a g good game plan after that incredible first round. Simon with the putter. And Calvin's certainly going to go to his rhino here on this short approach. That is so far up the fairway. Yeah. Wow. They made it look very, very easy. And with these winds being down, I don't want to say easy. I, I think that it, there's certainly some difficulty. Calvin with a great putt starting the round off. But the course just doesn't know about it. The players just don't know that it's difficult because everyone's shooting hot rounds. I was talking to Kayla earlier today, who's obviously owner and designer of the course, and he said that there has never been a day or back-to-back -back days of it being so calm. He said it's actually a negative win that is sucking the discs <laughs> into the basket. <laughs> I got a crack out of that. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I'm like, you're so right, though. Yeah. And Conrad's in. I can't remember a calmer day than today. You may be right, and I I would not be too surprised if you were talking about bogey free rounds in the tournament that this might set the record for number of players who finish the event bogey free. I wouldn't be surprised if it sets another scoring record for most scores in the double digit below par through two rounds. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to see what that what that mark is at the end of this round. I'm sure it's going to be pretty high. And just like that, our card starting off with a star frame. And Joma's Pro might as well turn their pockets inside out because this is going to be a donation festival to Edge. On to hole two, par three, 284 feet. Just that mandatory right there on the right side of the fairway, keeping players to go up this gut here. Most players on this card are most likely going to go with a putter. But like we... Um, said on Nico's approach, I wouldn't be too surprised to see some kind of mid-range thrown here as well. And Nico does go with the backhand a little bit early, but again, getting through, that is perfect. Yeah, it looks like the same disc that he threw on his upshot on the previous hole. Mm-hmm. Like in that Zenus. James going back to the Conrad AVR. I'm sure we'll see that disc many times today. And even though it's calm out on the course, it's also a scorcher. It is hot and humid. Mm -hmm. And that will potentially. Uh, play some tricks later on as the round goes on and the heat stays up for these players. Sweat will become a part of potential grip issues. Right. I've definitely noticed, um, especially with putting, how if you don't have a birdie bag or something like that, putting kind of gets in your head with how sticky it is and can definitely become a factor. I, I, saw, I saw Tina um, last night, Tina Oakley, last night. She's camping on site and um, – we, we were going to play a game, but she said that she was too busy making whale sacks, and she, if she was doing anything besides sleeping, she was going to be working all night, and I'm sure there's high demand right now for any kind of bags that can keep your hands dry. So I'm at a bit off with his drive. I was going to say, it's actually quite incredible how good they oh, are at this small gap. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is mm -hmm. it looks kind of big on camera, but once you step up to the tee, it definitely shrinks. Mm-hmm. And so far through two rounds, it seems like I haven't I haven't seen a whole card go through here clean, and, except for the lead card. <laughs> I've been making up for the errant tee shot. Not even a wry smile. Oh, there's kind of one. <laughs> Huge putt from almost 60 feet. Mika was ready to chase that one in. That was almost 100% in the basket before he started going after it. <laughs> he definitely looks like a man on a mission this weekend so far. He is 
walking around confidently, throwing the disc really well, and he's making putts, making a lot of putts. And he had a, uh, that's two straight star frames to start off this round. He had a dead center spit out yesterday on one of the holes, and so his round could have even been better than 15 under. It's just remarkable what these players are doing to this course. Yeah, one thing's for sure with Nico, his putts falling. He's one of the most dangerous players in the world and has been for a decade. Forever. In fact, there, there's very few people who throw the disc with as many angles and speeds as Nicola Castro, which makes him deadly on it. Not just a long, wide open course, but any course. Hole three, par three, 426 feet. This is a fairway driver or a mid-range for some of these guys, even as we saw Eagle throw an MD3 parked yesterday. Nico leaking this one out well to the left, and that has skipped over that path out of bounds. That is going to be a very difficult par save. Nico, Nico obviously not happy about that one. It was like the most stable disc I've ever seen. Yeah, but he is so good at that shot. Yeah. James, a little, yeah, that's the commitment that Nico was looking for. This is tracking. Wow. Oh, wow. Just narrowly avoids the Disc Golf Pro Tour cushion. What do you call that? A little cushion under the basket. One. Uh, I think it's a cushion. All right. Yeah. A little pad in case somebody runs into it or something. Kind of like one of the field goals. That's a promotional piece. That's all that is. Simon. This is a new fairway driver that he was telling me he just absolutely loves. And there's the cushion right there. That is such a beautiful shot. That was never more than four feet off the ground the whole way. You know, like for jump putters, for when they run them in, just mm -hmm. in case they like slip or something, they, they're not going to stub their toe. Or... You're saying someone could jump putt from 10 meters out and then run forward all the way to the basket? <laughs> is that what you're illustrating right now? Like on the field goal posts, you know how stop they have the, just they have the same. They Calvin have the Heinberg same. with an eagle out the circle's right, edge. <laughs> Nico is really good at this flex shot. He's so good, in fact, that over the years playing with him a lot. Oh wow! I've seen a lot of people try it, mm -hmm. and he makes the fairways look really big, certain fairways, and, mm -hmm. and he like kind of baits you into throwing similar shots sometimes. Yeah, and it's such a huge left to right shot that it's it really makes these small fairways look. Oh, Calvin, just off left. You'd think that a big shot that is taking so much room left to right would make the, the small fairways look smaller, but he somehow manages to flex the disc into the perfect spot. Right. He's definitely really good at manipulating that angle in order to make the fairway as big as possible. Calvin in for his par. Nico going to have to tap in an early bogey, unfortunately. Still under par. Yeah, but bo a bogey on this course, like, it's going to be tough. To, yeah. You know. Especially after he's taking a two-stroke drop, drop to James Conrad right there. James Conrad off to a hot start with a 15 down first round. He's three down through three on here already. Watch out, folks. Birdie Festival. Hole four, par four, 701 feet. We saw Eagle McMahon throw the absolutely jaw-dropping 750-foot roller in round one. Will any of these guys, maybe Simon, go for the roller? Roller is obviously a great play, but also the big backhand turnover shot. Put yourself in position to try to get low ceiling approach underneath those trees and up to the elevated pin. Eagle definitely baited me into throwing the roller today. I was so close. I threw it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> couldn't do it. You I did am. the eagle shot. You were talking all about it yesterday. And now you, find, you did was, it. Yep, I went for it. <laughs> James. I had a, I, had a, uh, I didn't, it wasn't the same it result. <laughs> <laughs> that is so that big. That is huge. That, that old green right there is probably at the 500-foot mark, and James is well onto it. Simon looked like he's lining up the air shot. Now, even a little bitty nick like that can yeah. take a good 20 to 40 feet off your disc. It doesn't matter if you're still throwing at 600 feet. Did 
cheese just you can see that power just ripping into that just a little bit too low didn't get the flex doesn't matter it's still out there at 550. Nico, great roller thrower. I wouldn't be surprised to see him lay one down here. Yeah, I'm curious. No, nope, it's an air shot. And this needs to keep turning right. It is in danger of going out of bounds left. Oh, hangs on there. Oh, what a recovery shot. Nico not happy with the tee shot. A little bit less than 100% commitment on the last two drives, but makes up for it with a great approach. Too easy. James actually jump hunting his approach. And that has caught the lowest part of the tree in the way. I don't leave 45 feet or so left for Conrad. He tried to jump at it. Yeah, that's an ambitious distance. And, and he's got it. But uh, yeah, if he didn't hit the tree branch, I mean, yeah. for sure. We've seen him jump putt off tee pads over 200 feet. Or slightly downhill. Just incredible. Yeah. Slightly downhill. And James, to keep this perfect start alive, 38 feet. Oh, just a bit low. That yeah, looked good, too. Mm -hmm. He still has putted on every single one of these opening 22 holes. He's just getting himself all these opportunities. Yes, quite incredible. Nico in for the birdie. And Simon and Calvin will just have tap-ins for their birdies. I forgot to mention this, everyone. Happy 4th of July. I meant to mention it on the first hole or the fourth hole. Either way, here we are. Hole five, par four, 910 feet. This is as close to a par five as you're gonna get as far as getting there in two is very difficult for your average player. But this is very much a par four for these players. Very wide open tee shot. Just wanna put yourself in position by not turning, uh, by not fading out too much at the end, just keeping the disc turning right, there is that tee box in the middle of this fairway that you want to land somewhere around that range. Yeah, for the average player, if you get, well, the above average player, if you get anywhere near that tee pad over there, you're going to have uh, a makeable shot into mm -hmm. the green. Now, where Simon is... That high grass is not the best spot. It isn't, but... Simon has a unique ability of throwing it way further than all of us. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm actually I don't think he'll have a problem even throwing Heiser from there. That would the be quite annoying. But yeah, you're probably right about that. Um but it is you're pushing almost six hundred feet from that grass on the left side. And Calvin is also not getting his disc to turn over. That's gonna be out there where Simon is as well and even further in the high grass. And we're gonna have a little throw off there between Simon and Calvin. I still don't think they're gonna have a problem. I really don't. I, I bet you're right. I bet you're right. Nico asking for it to turn more and he is also, well, he's a little bit better than the other two, but this is still probably 40 to 60 feet further left than any of these players would like to, to land their drives. It's just so calm, though. You can just kind of, yeah. whatever your distance line is, you shouldn't have a problem hitting that from mm -hmm. that. from that. And Simon and, I think, Calvin are 
probably two of the four furthest throwers mm -hmm. from a lie like that. Yeah, this right here. This is the ideal shot. Yes. That's what you're looking at. You can just barely see that tee pad on the left side of the, the shot there. And there you can see what is left for these guys. And the reason I say it is the further left you are, the less flex you have to throw. So you can actually use mm -hmm. that right side to your advantage and kind of skip it on that green. God, just smoking this. Proving you uh, know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, that skips wow. all the way up there. That is so... And he went before Simon, so... So good. To control that fast of a disc from that distance to be that close is just... He's on another plane right now, man. He's really taking that momentum from last week and just rolling with it. Even last season. Yeah. Yep. This is... Go in. Oh, wow. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, well, you you trusted them as exactly as much as you should have. That uh, That's awesome. Nika from a little bit shorter with a different line. Good flex. It, it's going to need some good stability here at the end. That's going to leave them at... 33 to 36 feet. Now this hole is playing so far that mm -hmm. you have to, you know, I, I feel like in order for myself to get there, I have to throw two perfect flex shots right. of pure distance. Right. And these guys are just chipping it up there. You have to play better than these guys do to get the same score. Oh, yeah. Well, they kind of shanked their tee shots way left. They yeah. weren't trying to do that. And then yeah. they had just a little chipper in there. That's just, that is insane. Nico spinning it and catching. He knew that was Ooh, it. I like the little fist pump. Fireworks. There's another 4th of July reference. He's got the stars and bars shorts on. He was almost kind of close to running into that little pad we were talking about. <laughs> There's a jump putt you're talking about. <laughs> James, too much mustard on that hot dog, just a bit high. Simon hit the bucket, huh? Yeah, Simon hit the bucket. He'll relish that moment for years to come. Okay, never mind. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's trying to catch up. What do you expect? <laughs> All right. All <laughs> six. Bar three, 414 feet. This one is averaging a whopping 2.57. So everyone is birding at 52% of the field. Over half of the 103 players are birding this hole over water the whole way. There really is a nice backstop behind this pin. So it doesn't really discourage the player from throwing as much of a line drive direct shot at it as possible, although these guys are most likely going to go with the big hyzer play. Somebody told me Anthony Barella threw a mini over it. <laughs> That's so, he is one of the best mini throwers I've ever seen, though. I mean, yes. He can rip. And Simon just keeping this round off to that perfect start with another great drive. I wonder what Calvin's thinking. <laughs> like, I spent three hours shading the upper lip. Man. This is a Napoleon Dynamite reference. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> the face you just made was like, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> I was expecting something more like a uh, pretty basic Kaiser or something. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Calvin just throwing. I'm perfect. pretty sure this is the same disc that Nico tried to turn over on. Oh. What was it, hole three? So, learning from it, keeping that a bit short. That's going to be a long inside circle one putt. James, after that three for three start, has gotten a couple pars. Nico has now tied it back up with him, as has Simon. Calvin just one back. What disc is. 
James throwing here? I I don't even want to guess. I just never get it right. I'm not going to guess. It's looking very straight. I was expecting it to start hyzering about halfway there, and it just never did. That is going to be a very difficult putt. As you can tell, all those little saplings are going to make a very interesting final 30 feet. Maybe even outside the circle. Oh, and he had an opening. He lunged, but comes up short. And that's looking like he might be dropping another stroke if Nico can make this one to the entire card. This guy is focused. When he's making this putt, like you said, one of the most dangerous players in the last 15 years of the game. Oh, absolutely. Just like Macbeth, Ricky at, at times, um, you know, what was it, 2009 to 2012 or something like that, mm -hmm. there was the same talks of him being unbeatable. Yeah. Where his putter would never hit the ground. And his hair was made out of fiery flames. That, that was the legend. So, three down for the card on hole six. Conrad with the only par. Moving on to hole seven, par three. 294 feet. Only a couple holes like this on the course. Hole two, hole seven, and hole 12. All have that nice little woodsy feel. A little bit of the hill action here in this one. The best play is going to be either a putter or mid-range driven into just the top edge of that hill with a little bit of stability maybe just a little skip over so difficult to get the speed right on this one it's interesting having these holes because actually this type of course design i feel like this is the hole where you could actually gain a stroke on somebody oh certainly. like there is definitely that stroke um help me out with that word i'm looking for differential yeah score differential? i always mess it up yep uh, yeah I mean, it's, it's, you can tell, like, this one's only 294, and it's not that small of a gap, but only 25% of the field is burning, or it's more than 50% of the field is burning the last hole at 414. Right. You kind of get into that same mode as Calvin that shows you exactly what you're trying to do. You get in that mode of throwing those big, long shots, and then, then you get back into the straight jacket golf where it's forced in a very specific type of shot. It can throw you off your rhythm. Right, which is why I feel like coming into this hole, there's actually a little bit more pressure on your drive, and at least for me, because I know if I get this hole, I'm gaining strokes. I'm finally gaining strokes on the field. That is also how you do it. I feel like that's exactly what I was talking about right mm -hmm. there with his kind of force over. You know, that's a fan grip with a very overstable disc that he's making that he's making that gap actually a lot bigger the way that he's. He know, makes a lot that. of important decisions where. The disc needs to land on Anheuser onto a flat surface or Heiser, or if it, you know, when it hits the ground, Nico's very carefully selecting those angles. And James, that is a surprisingly errant throw. Was expecting him to come up big here with this drive. Now he's in a bit of trouble early left. Pretty. That is going to be a long, scary putt for the par. Simon, six for six, and decides to lay up. It's a wise decision. Doesn't like <laughs> it, I'm sure. Yeah, no, that is. You really have to have some humility to mm -hmm. be able to do that. And James, once again, high on the putt. And that is going to be three pars and then a bogey. That is really going to drop James back off the pace, especially if Nico and Calvin can hit these birdie putts. Well, you got to know yourself. That's the most important thing. All 35 seconds. Well, <laughs> it's not 35 seconds. Sometimes it's more. Well, no. 
You don't get 30 You don't seconds. get 35 <laughs> seconds, but it doesn't mean he doesn't take 35 <laughs> seconds. I feel like the way that he said it, though, he was like, all 35 seconds. Like, <laughs> oh, that was a rule. lot of time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's the rule. <laughs> you get 35 to 45 seconds. <laughs> Not the case, but good birdies there from Calvin and Nico. On to hole eight, par five, 1,110 feet. Big open field. The only decision off the tee is do you go left, big Anheuser, or do you go flip up down the middle? And then from there, it just sets you up another big shot. The only trick there is there's OB that creeps into the left side, and there's a little bit of trees coming in late for the low ceiling uphill approach. But I really would be surprised to not see three to four under from this group on this hole. I haven't seen a lot of people even go down the gut. It's Calvin's shot. He likes that shot. Did Calvin do it yesterday? I just remember he threw it far, and uh, I think he did that again. Maybe they all did. I don't know. I don't think that's Nico's play, though. He's more of the big Anheuser kind of guy. Oh, yeah. Glide. Hanging out there, calling for it to glide. Doesn't get the glide. I really don't think that's going to really put him out of position, though, because the next shot really is so wide open, he'll be able to make up for how short that drive was. Simon a bit tight, just barely getting around that tree. Not the biggest shot we've seen from him either, but that's in pretty good position still. James really needs a clutch birdie here to get him back into the swing of things. Uh oh. And that takes such trust, and it fights out and gets quite a bit of distance, too. But that was very scary. If that caught any limbs in that tree line and pulled him in, there's no way he's set up for a birdie at that point. But got away with it. Wow, look at this shot. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's putting Nico right in his money zone for the third shot. It's interesting how important the putt is for your entire game. We see Conrad miss a couple, but he was throwing the disc just fine. Mm -hmm. And then you can see the confidence just kind of slowly deteriorating. Yeah, it, it really is. It's, it's wow. really the shot no. that keeps your whole entire game together is the putting stroke. And there, like you said, that James goes OB. He's going to need an incredible fourth shot to get up to the green to save his par. Otherwise, he's going to be in danger of taking another bogey on the front nine. I don't think from where he is that that's very accessible. It's going to be a long shot. Calvin, too tight, having to go forehand. It's a shot that he's got in the bag, though. He's got enough distance. Really no player on this card has been in position. Yeah, it's. I've, I'm pretty surprised to see that. Calvin, huge third shot. Oh, my word. Wow. Just to have a look is incredible from there. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that was his eagle again. I think it's understable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, not for me. It'd probably be like <laughs> just extremely stable. <laughs> <laughs> when he holds the disc, it says eagle for you. It just says firebird. Oh yeah. What the heck? Uh, this this is in big trouble. I only say that because oh. he doesn't like it. So yeah. <laughs> He's laughing about it though. Yeah. Well, it's usually the first time you see Simon laugh is when he does something so ridiculously good. Or so ridiculously bad that he can't even believe it. I almost ended up on the other green. James, he's throwing his fourth. This he was is looking good. Yeah, he was actually in, a, in better position than I thought from there. I thought he went way earlier. Mm -hmm. He'll have 32 feet left for the par save. This is a shot Nico's been working on extremely hard over the last really year, maybe year and a half, that I've seen. And that's pushed 
That is perfect. I've got to see a lot of disc golf, especially having to, you know, be a couch potato and watch everybody play. <laughs> No way. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Like you said, yes. the only time you see Simon smiling <laughs> is if he does something really bad or really good. Oh, I had no idea this was, was, this was coming. This is incredible. Oh, wow. Simon, Simon, Simon. That's what a whole... Uh, Quarantine three and a half months of doing trick shot videos will get you. I mean, he's always been one of the best. Yeah, that's like what he does in his life. Yeah. <laughs> he throws them in. Yes, he does. Wow. Special moment for Simon. And Calvin, right here, this is an opportunity to join Nico at 20 momentarily, tie for the lead. That putt is looking so mechanical. Just his stroke remains the same. Just when he goes further out, the putt just goes a little bit higher, but everything else remains exactly the same. And another great save. Two absolute awesome par saves. Two, another two candidates for uh, shot shank redemption. Nico almost fell over again into that padding. He's really... <laughs> good thing it's there. All <laughs> I got to say is good yeah. thing it's there. <laughs> and here we are, a hole nine, final hole of the front. We got par three, 380 feet, playing more like 430, 440. Wouldn't be too surprised to see any of these guys go for a distance driver and a little bit high and wide and try to spike onto this old golf green. There is a bunker behind the pin, and there's also out of bounds somewhere in the 25 to 30 foot range behind the pin. Another one of my favorite holes, just because this um, stroke separation is is quite wide on this one. Mm -hmm. Especially if you land short, you can definitely get strokes on your on the field. Really, seems like an easy birdie, and these guys will probably make it seem like that. But yeah. even that putt right there is you miss it at all, and you could roll out of bounds pretty easily you can see how dry and hot it is out here just by the way that calvin's disc wouldn't stop rolling on that hard pack green you go after a good line there from calvin able to go to school but a little bit lower skipping out towards the edge that's going to be a very scary putt Throw it again. Throw it in again, Simon. Come on. Oh, a little bit short. All three of these putts are right there at the edge of, like, scary zone. They're all very close to being 100% from this range also, so maybe it's not scary for them. But no, I guarantee they're terrified right now. <laughs> all of them are walking up thinking, I wish I was closer. Yeah, for sure. James, a little bit more low direct line, but a similar result. We're going to have four really scary putts as these players get up to the green. Nico first. I feel like if this is outside the circle, Nico's a little bit. Yeah, it is. He'll be a bit more comfortable. Wow. So slow on that jump putt. Look at that. Not a single wobble the whole way. This man is zoned in right now. After the bogey on hole three, he greens out the rest of the front nine. Seven under for Nico. Really correcting that one small throwing error that he made on the tee pad on hole three. I feel like if he was just inside the circle, that putt becomes a little bit, a little bit harder. Yeah, for sure. And James also in his money zone in back-to-back -back days, he makes a scary putt from about the same spot. And if these guys are scared of this putt, they're not showing it right now. It's hop-notch putting from this lead group. Nico fist pumped it. He was definitely happy he made yeah. it. Seen a couple of those this round from him. He is loving this. 
who wouldn't? Another star frame from the group on that stroke separator hold. They're just separating themselves from the rest of the field. And there it is, the front nine. Couple of bogeys, but other than that, I mean, maybe a total of three or four pars. It was just a ton of birdies. The rich get richer, but Eagle McMahon sneaking up into that fourth position with James Conrad falling back at only three down the front nine. Seven under, you have to shoot on the front nine just to stay in the action. Absolutely. The sprint continues, folks. Join us on the back nine coming up in just a second. Can't wait.